Hello, and welcome to this leadership update discussion between myself and our very own UTC Chair, Mr. Paul Lambert. We are very pleased to be with you virtually to provide you with this update on UTC and how we have been representing you in Washington on top priority issues. Mr. Lambert and I are going to go through this in a very conversational style. And we're going to engage with each other and share with you our thoughts on the top issues for the rest of this year. And we might even jump into 2022. But first, let me thank all of you for attending our in-person and virtual events over the last, over this year. It is a just a tremendous show of support for UTC that so many of you are continuing to show up and stay plugged in. And without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our chair, Mr. Paul Lambert, to say a few words. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Again, thanks to every each and every one of you that is watching this, either in an in-person event or a virtual event. Uh, as she said, it's still kind of a crazy time out there. So we all struggle a bit, maybe with all this technology, but we're trying to do our best and we really appreciate your continued support as we go through these uh, kind of unchartered times, if you will. So in each event, we hope that you have a very good learning opportunity, whether in person or virtual. And again, we do really appreciate your continued support to make UTC what it is today. Awesome. So, go ahead, Cheryl. Oh, I was just saying awesome. So, you know, and just wonderful, uh, Mr. Lambert is expressing, we really are sincerely gratitude, grateful for all that everyone has shown support. And that we were able, even in these unprecedented times to get together. I, I know I had a wonderful time, but with that being said, I wanna thank you again. And let's get to the conversation. I'm, I would like to kick off the conversation with a question. Um, to first, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask to Mr. Lambert, what in this past year has it been like for you, and what was it like attending your first in-person annual conference in almost two years? And then maybe I'll give a few uh, insights. Well, the attending the conference in Portland was amazing. It was great to be able to get in person back together. I think the overarching uh, takeaway from that conference was everyone renewing their friendships in person, if you will. Uh, because we are, for the most part, although there was a number of new attendees, but for the most part, it's familiar faces and just trying to catch back up it's like an extended family, if you will. And so that part was uh, really the highlight to me was, was getting together with uh, you know, friends. Not, not only uh, you know, meeting some new ones, but really just kind of getting back together. And everybody felt, I think, more comfortable, even though we were masked and followed the COVID protocols. Uh, it was just good to be in person and get to see each other. and. Plus the fact we all kind of wondered what we'd all look like with a little bandito mask on anyway. So, <laughs> so, uh, Absolutely. It, uh, no, really just that hands-on learning for me, meeting in person versus, uh, you know, virtual. That, that's probably the, the highlight for myself. Awesome. Well, I would like to add a few uh, insights of a, Mr. Lambert, our chair has definitely covered the feeling. It was absolutely wonderful. And we, we thankfully, we have uh, some videos out there that we were able to capture, not just um, live stream our content, but we also were, was able to capture some of our networking events to show you exactly what um, Mr. Lambert is talking about. And I have to agree, it was amazing. In spite of uh, the pandemic still being very present in spite of uh, hurricanes all around and also the some of the civil unrest that had occurred in Portland and probably is still occurring. With all of those factors and probably some I haven't even mentioned, 
it was an amazing experience uh, to see so many gathered, both utilities and technology partners, for the first time in two years. I mean, as most of you know, last year we pivoted and we had our virtual conference, which was amazing as well. Um, and this year we started off with Reno. And then just to come back and with the annual conference, it was very positive. And thankfully, no one reported any incidents of COVID. Uh, so we practiced all safety protocols, and, and that was also wonderful that we could pull off an event like this in spite of everything and, and have make sure that everyone's health is first and foremost. So we're trying to be just like our members, resilient. And that's also what my blog, part of it, is going to talk about, just how this experience was so great, and we're so grateful, and it impacted myself and, and many of us. So that, that definitely have to just amplify what our chair said. So I'm going to pass it back to our chair. So one of the things that we did at the beginning of the annual conference was uh, UTC itself, as far as you want to talk about a little business, is a strategic planning process. And so we kicked that off. It's been three years since we had uh, really reviewed and establish the current strategic plan. And so with that, I guess maybe I would uh, ask Cheryl what her initial uh, thoughts were as we began this uh, process of taking this strategic plan and evolving it to the next level. So with that, Cheryl? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, like you said, at this past annual conference, we decided in considering um, how in the past we would have had Capitol Hill week or board week where we would have asked our board members to come to DC, Maryland, Virginia area, the DMV to have a week long event for strategic planning as well as a hill visit. Uh, but with everything going on and the difficulties and the travel restrictions, we tried our best to consolidate that. So we decided to do this at the annual conference. And uh, what we did, we started a vetting companies that would help us facilitate this strategic plan. Probably we started, if I, if I remember correctly, as last year. So we have been having these conversations so that we could get moving very quickly this year because we knew we would have to do some virtual um, pre-work for with our board as well. So we tried to do that without being too intrusive as we know everyone has a demanding schedule. But we were able to do it. Franklin Covey was the group that we chose to facilitate the strategic plan, and uh, they did an excellent job with engaging conversation from all board members, new and seasoned board members. So we have a lot of documents to go through. And actually, we, with no hesitation, I want to thank again all of the members that volunteered to be part of the group that will help edit and write. Um, the strategic plan that we will pre present to the board in December for approval. But I feel personally that the strategic planning process went very well. Um, and we look forward to seeing the end results. I can tell you, I have seen a draft. I think um, if we take some of the highlights, this was a hybrid event. So we had board members in person and we also had board members on virtually. And both the virtual and in-person board members were able to contribute significantly. Uh, so I think that's something worth highlighting and, and also worth noting. So once again, I'm very excited that we're going to get a strategic plan that we're able to benchmark. We're going to be accountable and it's going to really reflect where UTC is going in the next three years. So please stay tuned for that. So well, with thank that, you, Cheryl. Thank you. The, uh, and I would concur that you know, some of the takeaways for me were the engagement. You know, we've, we've increased the number of participants uh, on the board uh, specifically for this particular reason so that we gain a wide range of perspectives and to help, you know, chart the course for UTC in this next three years. And so it remains a high priority as far as the board goes to uh, continue to evolve the strategic plan and to finalize it so that you know we're giving direction to not only the staff but to the board members themselves and then the entire membership that uh, you know because things have changed enough to where uh, 
you know, it, it takes some tweaking and yes. to make us move forward. So it's a great beginning and uh, lots of work involved in it. Lots of work yet to come, but um, we're going to stay engaged with it to, to get it done. Awesome. Other uh, highlights, Cheryl, from the annual conference come no. to mind? <laughs> of course, I mean, uh, I'm still, even though it's a month ago, uh, I, I'm still very much on cloud nine. So I just want to commend everyone for their hard work this year. This conference definitely would not have been possible without each and every one of you. And that's members, core technology partners, non-members, um, staff, everyone really played a key role to make this successful. And we just sincerely thank you. And everyone knows I love the numbers. So I just want to highlight a few other numbers that stood out to me this year, despite the circumstances that we had to face. We had over 40 sponsors, over 800 attendees, over 130 exhibitors, and over 48 hours of training and education material. And once again, zero positive COVID tests reported. I think that's definitely worth noting because the challenges were not small challenges. So I just want to add that, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, the staff really worked when you factor in just a normal um, type of an event like this for all the I's to dot and T's to cross. And then you add in a virtual component, plus then the COVID protocols, uh, they did a very outstanding job, outstanding. So, and as you might know, they got a condensed uh, timeline for the next one because we had to, uh, you know, bump this one a couple of months. And so the other one's actually a month earlier than, you know, what we've had in tradition. So come May, uh, it's, they're working already full time on putting together all those items that you can imagine for the next conference. So uh, truly outstanding. The One of the highlights for me, of course, was, uh, you know, being elected to be the chair and then getting to meet some of the past chairs that uh, were in attendance, uh, as well as getting a chance to welcome our new executive committee, uh, Dewey Day as a vice chair and Kurt Mason as our Secretary Treasurer. And so um, knowing both of those individuals, great assets to UTC and to the Executive Committee. And of course, uh, we can't leave Greg off where he's still participating and uh, he just gets to take a few deep breaths now for the last two years that we wouldn't let him do that. But uh, anyway, so I'm excited that we've got a great uh, Executive Committee uh, moving UTC forward. And again, it was just a real privilege to uh, meet some of the other past chairs and have a little time to interact with them. Awesome. That is, that's, I have to echo that too. I'm excited too. And thankfully, uh, Paul officially um, was elect, selected or elected by the membership. We know that Paul, Mr. Lambert, our chair, has been already getting very acclimated to this seat. So we're excited as where his leadership is going to take us along with the other executive committee members who are just wonderful to work with so far. So we just are really encouraged and, and I, I'm interested to see where the future hold, holds for us because there's been a lot of great ideas from coming from the leadership and I know that they can make it happen. So together we're going to continue to do this. Yes, and again, just our, um, our technology partners are extremely key to, as well as our core members, to make UTC what it is. And so we're very thankful that we've got the strong commitment from our technology partners to uh, support UTC in all the endeavors that we do. And uh, again, it's a partnership. Uh, and again, it brings a broad perspective, uh, which is great, which makes us that much more stronger. And so we welcome all of that and uh, just thankful for your continued participation and support. Awesome. If I may add, Mr. Chair, just a few more thoughts um, 
just to remind as we come to uh, the end of this uh, leadership update, um, you're going to hear me say this repeatedly. I want to encourage all of you watching this right now. And whenever you do get to watch it, please get engaged with UTC. There are many ways get engaged and if you're not sure we have an open door policy with the staff and everyone and we will help now help you navigate to get engaged we need you and um i know they say never say never but it is our hope that we will never go back to only in-person events just because we want to be able to allow platforms for everyone to be able to participate in the great knowledge exchange and to learn about utc and to learn hopefully make lasting, long lasting network, networking connections with other utilities and technology partners. And it is our hope that it won't be every event, you know, you can come to an in-person event, but we want to allow people who may have travel restrictions, any kind of restriction that will keep them from coming in personally, in person to an event, to be able to access, accessible, make our events, they are virtually accessible. As we know last year, had the highest attendance. Yes, we were in COVID, but it did show us, and not just our association, but all, all associations, that this is an opportunity to, to, large our, to increase our footprint. So we're going to continue to improve our content and its delivery to you. We also, we're member driven, so we want to hear from you so that we know exactly what you want so we can tailor it. We have a lot of exciting things in the works this fall and um, heading into spring 2022. Um, as you know, we just we I just came back from the Northeast Territory in Rhode Island. That was in person. Great energy. Another great e event. And um, we're getting ready to he head to our Southeast region or territory. And don't get too caught up in the names. We can change the names, but the format is still the same. And the goals are still the same. Educate, advocate, network. So we have plenty of other events virtually as well. As you may know, uh, one of the um, most passionate about is our DEI webinar, which I will be participating in uh, in October. So I urge you all to join me for this in-depth discussion alongside an impressive slate of speakers. Stay tuned for more details and stay tuned for more details about 2022 annual conference in Oklahoma City. I don't know about you, but I can't wait. So. I'm very excited and thank you OG for um, agreeing to host and we look forward to seeing you there. And as our chair said, we thank all of our technology partners and our utilities for bringing us this far. Thank you, Cheryl. Well, and uh, yes. just on behalf of the board and the membership to know that the UTC staff is truly dedicated and in our best interest doing everything possible to move the association forward. So just a fantastic group of individuals uh, just working hard every day. And again, I would echo what Cheryl said, uh, get involved. There's lots of opportunities. Join a committee, a working group, write an article for the journal submit a topic for an educational session and be a presenter at a conference. So in order for UTC to be the best that we can be, we need everyone involved and we encourage you to do that. So with that, thank you, Cheryl, for this opportunity to share a few comments and uh, look forward to seeing everyone in person when I can and otherwise uh, virtually. So thank you yes. very much. So thank you, Mr. Lambert. Thank you to our chair. And of course, we if you have any questions um, as this update needs to uh, in, in, you know, more information, relevant information, Mr. Lambert, the rest of the executive committee, they are available. We are all available for you. Any questions that you may have. Uh, our chair, Paul Lambert, also has a, a UTC uh, email address, which we will make sure we, we share with you. We see all of the different ways on the screen now that we can get involved, uh, stay plugged into UTC through LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter. And of course, if you want to give a donation to the UTC Foundation, which is addressing the workforce development issue and trying to encourage early career um, individuals to join this, this fight with you and do such great work with you. So we are hoping um, to 
do that. Once again, please reach out to us. And I believe off memory, and correct me, uh, Mr. Lambert, I believe it's paul.lambert at utc.org. But myself and my, my email as well, cheryl.riggs at utc.org, we're available. But thank you, Mr. Lambert. What an honor and a pleasure to do this leadership update with you. All right. Thank you.